Saxon Advanced Mathematics Lesson 74. Our topic today is Kramer's Rule. This is a fun topic and a straightforward lesson. Before I dive in though, I just wanna go back to Lesson 73. You remember that we were finding the perimeter and area of this polygon. There, were, there was a pentagon, a regular pentagon inscribed in a circle. We pulled out one of the triangles, and then we divided that one in half, and I was finding, first I found the perimeter, and that was fine, but then I was finding the area, and my calculation was a little bit different than John's, because he found the area of one of the small triangles, and then he multiplied that by 10, because each of the original triangles was now split into two, and his calculation looked a little bit different. What I did was I turned that back into the area of one of these full triangles using the full base of 7.06, which was this whole measure, times the height. And then I just multiplied that by five rather than 10. So we did the same thing. We just came at it from different directions and I got messed up in my, it was right here in my multiplication. It went completely off the rails. Look, there's three digits here, but I only created two rows. So I skipped one of them altogether. I guess I didn't even multiply by that. Anyway, this calculation was completely nutty, but what I showed you here was correct. And if you do multiply, divide, and then multiply by five, you will get the right answer. So this is all just fine. Two different ways to think about it, two different ways to look at it. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, let's talk about Kramer's rule. Now, we have been talking about solving systems of equations. For quite some time now, since Algebra 1. And I didn't even work with any of you guys for Algebra 1, so... We did this separately. The first thing that I think you learned was substitution. Then we learned elimination. And then we played around briefly with the idea of graphing the two lines and finding the solution as the intersecting point where the two lines meet. And what we learned is that that's really cool theoretically, and it's fun to see how the pictures play out, but it's really a pain to try to identify that point just by the picture because it's really hard to, um, excuse me, it's really hard to find the exact points um, on your graph. It's kind of an imprecise way to do it. Then, just a few lessons ago, we found that we could solve the equations abstractly and create formulas for x and y. And that was kind of fun, right? You eliminate whichever one you're not solving for and just play around with the letters until you get everything on one side. That was kind of cool. We're gonna look at that briefly today. But today what we're focusing on is a fifth way. It's called Kramer's Rule. We'll talk about that. It's kind of a mashup of taking the ideas in number four and arranging them in a matrix format, which we also just learned about. So a fifth way to solve systems of equations, it's gonna be a mashup of a couple things that we've learned. And one thing that I want you to know is that this study of um, looking at the patterns of the coefficients in linear equations, which is what we've been doing here. We've been looking at the patterns that the letters make when we play around with those lines. That's a special branch of mathematics called linear algebra. And again, it's mostly concerns with patterns in the coefficients of systems of equations. Okay, so it goes on and on. We're not gonna go on and on with it, we're just dabbling a bit. All right, now, 
what we saw back in this lesson when we played around with the formulas, that if you take AX Now, I want you to look carefully at how I'm making the letters go alphabetically in these systems, because I think it might be different than what we did before. But in any case, notice it's AX plus BY, CX plus DY. Then we go on and say equals E equals F. So look at the, the way we laid those down in the pattern and make sure you're really clear on that, right? If we solve for X, which we learned to do by eliminating the y's, right? We would multiply so that these guys canceled. And then we would rearrange to get the x by itself. The formula we would get is this. I'm not gonna do it now because you know how to do that yourself. And if we solved for y, we would get my new marker is starting to fade you guys i have to go get a new one okay this is the value the abstract value we would get if we solved for x and for y now mathematicians Back in like the late 1600s, the 1700s, French, German, Swiss, Scottish guys were fascinated with these patterns that you would get by solving this system of equations abstractedly. And they were also playing around with the idea of matrices. And they decided, what if we set up a matrix so that the determinants of the matrix, right? Remember how you multiply and subtract? What if we set them up so they were equal to these? What? That's what they did. So what they did was that they set it up like this. X equals, and we're gonna memorize these, but there are some simple, neat things to notice about them that will help memorizing them really become really easy. Okay, make sure you copy this down. I'm gonna show you the magic in just a second. Okay, so I'm trying to think. Kramer, who was a Swiss guy, he's the one who really fine-tuned this process. That's why we call it Kramer's Rule. He was Swiss and he published um, most of his works, this important part of the work, in 1750. Okay, so he came up with this idea. So this is Kramer in 1750. He was Swiss. What's his first name? Gabriel, which we think of as a girl's name. Okay. All right. So I've given you these two matrices in fraction form, and I've told you we're going to memorize these. Don't worry. I'm going to give you hints on how to do that. But let's just practice proving that they actually equal these formulas which we derived and know that they're correct. Okay, remember with a two by two matrix, we start in Seattle and we go down to Miami. It's E, D minus, we start here and go up F, B. And then we do the same thing down here, A, D minus C, B. Now let's check that out and compare it to this. E, D, D, E, same difference, minus B, F, F, B, same difference, over A, D, minus C, B, B, C, same difference. All right, so what we just proved is that this matrix will give you the same answer as you get when you eliminate, because that's how we got these equations, right, or these formulas, rather. We got these by eliminating from here. So this, check, 
works. Let's try the Y now. Start in Seattle, go to Miami, AF minus CE over AD minus CB. Let's check it, AF minus CE, AD minus, oh look, there's only one that got turned around that time. Okay, so we have a system that works. We've checked it and we've proved it, and we know that these matrices are a, an accurate way to get to, to solve a system of equations, right? So I'm gonna copy them over on the next page. Copy them again, because you'll be wanting to memorize these. So X equals, I wanna make sure. I'm putting these lines to show that they're matrices. Sometimes people go, wait, absolute value? No, when they're around a group, an array of letters like this, you know that they indicate a matrix. Okay. Okay, so we know that these matrices work. Their determinants will give us the right formulas. Let's look at how we can memorize them. Let's also, let me just write this down. AX plus BY, CX plus DY equals E equals F. Okay, this is the original system of equations we're comparing them to. Notice the denominators are the same in the two sets of matrices, right? A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And notice that that fits with the pattern of the X's and Y's. If I just ignore that part, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Oh, so the, the denominators come right from the original equations. We take the letters off the left side. That's really easy, isn't it? Now let's look at what's going on in the numerators. Here's the part that's on the right. Here it is at the beginning of the X matrix, and here it is at the end of the Y matrix. Hmm, that's interesting, right? So the right side of the formula, or the original equations rather, the right side of the original equation shows up here and here. Now let's look at what's going on on the other part of the numerator. B and D are the Y coordinates. When we solve for X, the other part of the numerator is the Y coordinates. And when we solve for Y, the other part of the numerator are the X coordinates. Huh. Interesting, right? So there are some really strong patterns here that make these relatively simple to memorize. It helps me if I have this in front of me, and then I go, okay, the denominators are right there, and then this is in the top, and I have to remember that it goes in the beginning for the X's and at the end for the Y's. It kind of helps me to visualize it like this, where the, the right side kind of creates the bookends. And then in the middle, we have the other variables constants, all right? So those are some tips on memorizing Kramer's rule. Ah, oh, my poor pen. Doesn't wanna play anymore. All right, so now what we're gonna do is a couple quick examples to show how to use this. And it's great that we have all this up here because we're gonna need it, 74.1. Use Kramer's rule to solve. And then John gives us a system of equations. Okay, so that looks familiar, right? We've been messing around with things like this forever. What I like to do is in a contrasting color, write 
A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, when I start pulling those values to arrange in the matrices, to use Kramer's rule, I will not completely lose my mind. Um, and it says to solve for both of them. Sometimes it tells us to solve for just X. Sometimes it tells us to solve for just Y. And other times it says solve. So we'll do both. X equals, now I can copy here, and I can also try to remember E and F are first, minus one and 10. Then the Y coordinates are next, two and minus three. And then that's over, Do, 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 do. Three, four, two, minus three. Now what's nice is that when we go to solve for y, it'll be the very same number, won't it? So we won't have to calculate. All right, then it becomes Oh wait, I don't need to do it. This needs to go down here. Sorry. Okay, minus one times minus three, Seattle to Miami, and then LA to Maine, 10 and two. Remember that we have a minus sign in the formula, so we need to keep that handy. Um, and then we go down here, three minus three, four and two. Okay, so now we can simplify Minus three times minus one is positive three. I said the number's wrong, but the answer's right. Minus 20. Which is minus 17, right? Three minus 20. And then on the bottom we have minus nine, minus two times four is eight. Look, minus 17 again. So for this whole thing, we get x equals one. Right, simplified this. Okay, for y, the top is gonna to be different. Let's see, we want the ef values out here, so that'll be minus one and 10. Here we want the x coefficients, which are three and four. And then the bottom, we already know is minus 17. We don't even have to calculate that again. So now let's multiply the top. Three times 10 minus, minus one times four. 30 plus four equals 34, and it's over minus 17, and we reduce that and we see y equals minus two, whoops. Okay, and these can be written as an ordered pair. So the solution of this matrix is one minus two. That's why I like to see the answer. I would not be mad about that. Okay, kind of fun, kind of cool, kind of an interesting process these gentlemen brought together. Okay, let's try another one. Use Kramer's rule to solve. 5x minus 3y You can hear Gracie snoring quietly by my feet. Okay, and again, remember this pattern. I always want to go A, B, C, D, E, F. No, 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 that's not right. Now E and now F. Okay, we're supposed to solve for X and Y. Um, so let's see if we can remember our matrices for Kramer's rule. We want E and F here, one minus 17, and then we want the Y coefficients here. And then our denominator is this pattern. Five, two, minus three, minus seven. 
Okay, let's solve this. One times minus seven, minus 17 times minus three. Wow, that's a lot of minuses, isn't it? Okay. And then our cute little denominator is Seattle to Miami, five times minus seven, and San Diego to Maine, two minus three. All right, this is minus seven. One, two, three minus signs means it's gonna stay a minus. 17 times three, three times 10 is 30, three times seven is 21, 30 and 21, 51. This is minus 35, this becomes plus six. So that gives me, I didn't leave myself enough room there so I'll go this way. Um, let's see, that's minus 58 over minus 29, right? Oh, and look, 29 times two is 58. So this becomes x equals positive two. Yay. And now let's do our y. Let's try and remember these formulas without looking. Let's see with y the e and f values go here. And this is the x coefficients. So it's five and two. And then we already know our denominator. That is right there, minus 29. Okay. Oh, I love when you can just take that little shortcut. All right. And so, let's see. Seattle to Maine. Okay, it's gonna be five times minus 17 minus two times one. Five times minus 17, that's gonna be minus. Five times 10 is 50. Five times, in a second, I'm trying to try, keep my head straight. Five times 10 is 50. Five times seven is 35. 50 and 35 is minus 85 minus two. Hmm, okay. So that equals minus 87 over minus 29. I'm guessing that's three times. 29 times three is three less than 90. Yes, so this is y equals positive three. Is that correct? Yes, so we can write it as two, three, ordered pair. Yay, Gabrielle Kramer for coming up with a fun rule. One more example in this lesson that is not a trick, but a special situation, 74.3. Again, use Kramer's rule to solve. We have, as we write it down, we start to scratch our heads. Because look, three X plus two I equals five, three X plus two I equals eight. That seems a little crazy, right? How can that, what? How can there be a value of x and y that would make this equal five, but then the very same thing equal eight? That makes me suspicious, but let's just go ahead and do our solving and see what happens, because there's gonna be a fun surprise. Okay, x, the e and f values go first. Oh, I forgot to do this. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Oh, wait, no. E and F goes first. Five and eight. And then the Y values go next. Two and two. And then down here, it's A, B, C, D. So it's three and three, two and two. Okay, so now we'll multiply, whoops, minus, not equals, over, ready? Seattle to Miami, San Diego to Maine. Seattle to Miami, 
San Diego to Maine. Right, that's that whole simplifying trick of sort of superimposing a map of the United States over the top of this and imagining it as the cities. I like that trick. Okay, ready? 10 minus 16, so that's minus six on the top, and six minus six equals zero on the bottom. Oh, what was that sound you just heard? I think it was the kingdom imploding. This is not gonna work for us. We've got a zero in the denominator. That is a deal breaker. So what that means is there is no solution which we can either write as is, or we can write the null set, or we can write the empty set. Any of those is an acceptable way of saying, sorry, the universe just imploded, the kingdom blew up, and this is not gonna work. And we knew, right, way back here, that something was awry. So it doesn't shock us to find out that there was a problem here, because this makes no sense. But that is a valid, Conclusion for us to reach is that this does not have a solution. All right, so that is the special case, example 74.3. Um, but now you know a fifth way to solve systems of equations, and that is using the beautiful formulas of our friend, Gabrielle Kramer, 1750, a Swiss mathematician who was fascinated with matri matrices and linear algebra. Yay, don't you feel smart? What a piece of information you now have in your head. Lesson 74 is complete. Good job.